It's all very well to be fond of your sleep, but Revali is Revali. Hey, come along now, get a move on, show a leg. Careful, chaps, careful, you might break something. You know, these men aren't awake yet. There you be. And for once he's right, or is he? Surely there's something wrong if the whole squad's half dead. They're keen enough to get off parade. But there's not such a rush for breakfast. Must be something wrong. Seem to be a lot of flies around here. Wonder if that's anything to do with it. Let's do a spot of investigating and find out. We'll start at the officer's mess. Ah, more flies. Looks as though we're on the right track. He doesn't seem to want his breakfast this morning. Let's go and see how the other ranks are getting on. Young what's-his-name doesn't seem too happy with his breakfast either. What's the matter, chum? Don't you like it? Let's go and see where the breakfast came from. Perhaps we'll find out something there. A good shot, but a very bad practice. Yes, of course, there would be flies there. Looks as though we've found the root of the trouble. Flies. Look at this meat safe with a hole in it. Of course, the flies find the meat inside. And a hole in the sugar bag as well gives them a sweet course to follow. This cookhouse certainly wants attention. Pretty sight, isn't it? Anyway, the flies think so. Slovenliness and dirt's right up their street. Refuse bin with no lid, and of course, the swill tubs as well. Everything laid on just as the flies like it. The stable's untidy and dirty, with a nice rich manure heap in the middle. Just the place for the little beggars to breed. And filthy latrines to provide him with a happy hunting ground. Naturally, the sick parade is formidable. A young what's-his-name seems to have something on his mind. We'd better leave him to commune with nature and visit the other parades. No, they certainly don't look up to the job. Anyone would think them a very slack lot. What do you think, Sergeant Major? I think perhaps the poor fellows are a little tired. Got him. There he is, the cause of all the trouble here. How is it this insignificant little pest can get strong men down? Let's see. Now here is the adult fly. Here she is laying her eggs in batches of 100 to 150 at a time. The eggs are about a 25th of an inch long and are just visible to the naked eye. They're laid in manure or refuse. The strange thing about flies is that although the adult fly revels in light and sunshine, the eggs are not laid on the surface, but underneath. And when they hatch out, and little maggots or larvae emerge, they burrow deeper into the manure, away from the light. It takes some trouble to find them, but here they are. They feed and grow continuously day and night. This seems a favourite breeding spot, judging from the different ages of the larvae.
When fully grown, like the large one in the centre, they migrate into the ground and turn into a chrysalis or pupa and gradually change colour until they resemble little hard brown sausage-shaped barrels. Inside the hard skin, the fly begins to form. Eventually, it breaks out of its pupal case and burrows upwards, using its head as well as its feet. Do you see how it expands and contracts its head to help it free a passage towards the light and air? When it first emerges, it looks rather a poor sort of thing but its wings soon expand, its skin hardens, and it becomes the fly we know. How long has all this taken to come about? Six hours after the egg is laid, the larva hatches. Two days later, it's fully grown. In eight hours, the pupa is formed. and three days later, the fly emerges. So you see, from egg to fly is approximately six days. After its wings have unfolded and its body hardened, its first task is to find food. Let's see how it gets it. Like human beings, the fly likes its meat course first, and here it finds it already digested. Again, like human beings, it follows this with a sweet, jam if it's available. After a hard day, there's nothing like a glass of beer. The fly is quite prepared to share the beer, but not the work. It then goes around picking up various scraps wherever it can find them. This keeps it occupied until tea time. It likes tea and a piece of cake. It's unpleasant to think this little pest lives on your food, but it's worse than that. The fly always takes its first course here, and diarrhea, typhoid, dysentery and cholera going into the latrines in the waste matter of men sick from or sickening for these diseases comes out again with the fly. It then moves onto your food, and being unable to eat solids, it vomits up part of its stomach contents. Here it is in action, photographed through glass from underneath, so you can see clearly what happens. This vomit is puddled about your food to make a kind of porridge, which the fly then sucks up. Remember where it last fed. It also has a disgusting habit of leaving its droppings wherever it happens to feed. This is the leg and foot of a fly covered with short hairs. Think what this can gather up and then leave behind as it walks over your food. The fly isn't particular where it brushes it off. or even if it washes it off, into your beer. This is the footprint of a fly. Here is a series of flies' footprints on a specially prepared surface. The picture has been slowed up in order to show you what happens if these footprints are left undisturbed. Millions of germs growing from them. Diarrhea, typhoid, dysentery and cholera because the fly's first course is always in filth. How can you and I protect ourselves from this danger? Spot him by all means. But more drastic measures are necessary if we're to make any real inroad into his numbers. Tanglefoot, for instance, is a sweetly sticky compound into which a strip of zinc is dipped and then hung up in a likely spot. The roller towel trap is particularly suited to latrines, stables and other outside places where flies congregate. 
An occasional turn of the handle keeps the fabric soaked with a solution, which has an irresistible attraction for flies. A simple but effective snare for indoor use is baited with a solution of formalin. All you need is a glass jar and a strip of blotting paper threaded through a cardboard or paper lid. Provided there's no other food about, any wandering flies will be attracted by the solution and will wander no further. Out east, where the fly problem is much greater than ours, more elaborate steps must be taken to cope with the menace. Hefty chunks of meat, which have seen their best days, are used to bait the large cylindrical traps. These are then taken to the outskirts of the camp in order to attract the enemy away from quarters. Here, the line of defence is established and all is set for the daily blitz. Now, flies, come on! They seem to have come all right, but that's nothing to the harvest at the end of the day. And each one of these countless millions was a potential carrier of sickness and disease. The entrance to her principal base must be kept closed. Keep the trees clean and supplied with paper. Render her second lifeline useless by means of disinfectant. See that all stables are kept clean and well swilled down. And all refuse and garbage burnt, thus removing one of the fly's favourite breeding grounds. Properly cared for food preparation room should be fly-proofed by gauze-covered windows. Tables that are regularly scrubbed can't harbour scraps on which flies can feed. Everything clean and tidy. Clean cooks, clean clothes, clean utensils and a clean kitchen means no hope for the fly. And there's no food for her either, when all scraps are kept covered and all meat properly protected. In this kitchen, the only fault the orderly officer can find is that the larder door has been left open. There's no entrance for flies in the meat safe and no flies on this meat. There's no extra points ration for the fly if lids are kept on all waste bins. And no scraps are left under mess tables and the floors kept clean. If all these things are done, you can enjoy your meal without the terrible thought, am I likely to get disease from eating this? If all these things are done, the sick parade will sink to its proper proportion. Only two sick men. One tonsillitis and one cut hand. Then you'll carry out your work with zest. And your games with spirit. Then will the PT instructor be proud of his class. And the voice of the sergeant major will be still. Remember, there's only one thing to do with a fly. Kill him.